Tonight, two families told their loved ones are dead. Now police are trying to figure out how a middle of the night knock on the door turned into so much more. Then it's our house, our property, but these thieves simply do not care. Tonight, we're tracking them down and showing you what can be done to keep people from stealing your stuff. KSL News starts now. The school is devastated. Students stunned. Tonight, an entire community is mourning the loss of a young athlete, daughter, sister, and friend. Her life ended much too soon in a crash on Mountain View Corridor. It happened during school hours just miles from Harriman High School. That's where new specialist Ashley Kewish is learning more about this girl who died. Ashley? Deanie, sophomore Katie Connor played basketball and lacrosse here at Harriman High School. Now this is an open campus, so around lunchtime she and a couple other students left, but unfortunately she never made it back here. In most places it's about 55 miles per hour, but it does have intersections. Police say the three students were stopped at an intersection. When the light turned green, they rolled forward. At the same time, a white Mazda also entered the intersection. It appeared that perhaps the Mazda ran a red light. The force of the crash rolled the truck, killing Katie, who police say was not wearing a seatbelt. Soon, word of what happened spread back at the high school. The principal came on the announcements again, and he was obviously crying, and he told us that she had passed away. And as soon as the bell rang, it was just quiet. You could have heard, like, a pin drop. It was just silent. Oh, yeah, she's, she's right, right here. There. This evening, members of the lacrosse team and their coaches met to remember her. She was fun, beautiful, um, just amazing to deal with as a, as a player and as a person. They say even after Katie received a season-ending injury last year, she continued to show support. She kept coming back to practices in her cast and, and was still part of our team. They want her to be remembered as a girl with an infectious smile and someone who was a friend to all. She touched everybody, and I don't think that there's one player on this team that will forget her. Now, the woman in the Mazda was also taken to the hospital in serious condition. Police tell me there was a baby in the back seat of the Mazda, but the baby was properly restrained in a car seat and is expected to be just fine. Now, there was supposed to be a dance here tonight at Harriman High School, but when school officials heard about what happened, they canceled that. There's no school tomorrow because it's the end of the term, but starting at 7 a.m. here tomorrow, there will be counselors available to any students that need some extra support. Dini. All right, that's good to know, Ashley. What a shame. Thank you. Those counselors do have some important advice for parents tonight. Class is out until next week. They want to make sure grieving students take care of themselves physically over the weekend. To make sure they're hydrating, make sure they're eating, and to make sure they're sleeping. It's important to keep their physical well-being up so that then the emotional well-being can follow suit. Again, those counselors will be at the school tomorrow morning for anyone in the district who wants to talk about what happened. Mike? Of course, Mountain View Corridor is one of the Wasatch Front's newest stretches of freeway, and it's been a dangerous one. This year alone, we've covered nine accidents claiming three lives. We'll keep looking into the corridor and asking if changes can be made to make it safer. So stay with us for those answers right here on KSL. Kevin is here, spot on all week. The storm was here, and now you're saying it's on its way out. As quick as it moved in, it moved out, but not before dropping snow in the mountains of both northern and southern Utah. This taken from the Alta Lodge, we're at the base, an inch to an inch and a half, but up on top, we're talking two to three inches, and in southern Utah, they got even more. Take a look at some of the totals. Rain and snow, Bryce Canyon, a third of an inch. Cedar City, a quarter of an inch, with Fruit Heights picking up two tenths. St. George, 0.06. Brine had five inches. Alta had three. Snowbird did the same. Outside right now, well, the storm system is already moving into eastern Utah and into western Colorado. Skies will clear. Temperatures will drop tonight. Right now, it's 46. How cold it gets when our next storm arrives, and a look ahead at the weekend in just a second. Lots to talk about, Kevin. Thanks. Neighbors in Mill Creek are coming to terms tonight with something they never expected would come so close to home. Yeah, two men died in a burst of gunfire after what may have been a home invasion attempt gone terribly wrong. New special Andrew Adams learning more tonight about the man police say tried to break in. Andrew, what'd you find out? 
Well, Jesse Bruner appears to have been a tattoo artist who had had several brushes with the law over the past 16 years, but recently court documents show he'd been going through a divorce with his wife. In fact, just yesterday, a judge denied his ex's petition to waive a 90-day waiting period. But what he was doing on this street at 2 in the morning with a sawed-off shotgun, nobody seems to know. This is really devastating for us. Flashing lights and police tape markers of a community tragedy. And somebody was pounding on their front door, trying to get through the front door. What followed, nobody could have predicted. It sounds like maybe even a fight to keep the door closed. Police say homeowner Rusty Jacobs chased after Jesse Bruner after cops say Bruner tried to force his way in. Four houses down, detectives say both fired their guns. Both died. Rusty is a beloved father and husband. He is a dear friend and neighbor. His death is a great loss. As Jacob's family grieves, police are delving into Bruner's history. Court records show a criminal history dating back to the age of 18, including convictions for threatening to use a weapon during a fight, forgery, theft by deception, and for drug-related charges. Cops say Bruner had the street name Jesse James, who identified himself on social media as a tattoo artist and a rapper. Friends tell KSL he was fun and generous. While one friend says he could never shake multiple addictions, another says this wasn't characteristic of him. It's a matter of finding answers, talking with people, giving the family some time uh, on both sides, both families some time to grieve, both lost family members today. Rusty was easily the nicest guy, one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Neighbors of Jacobs are remembering a man they love. And just the devastation of losing this man, it's just, we're going to mourn for a while. Police continue to look at all angles in their investigation, both families asking for privacy for now. Nene? Another tough story, Andrew, thank you. Now we spent the day compiling the best ways to secure your home and to keep intruders out of your home. You can find that information and much more on KSL.com. New tonight, Ogden police are warning residents do not approach this man. He may be armed and dangerous. He's wanted for questioning in a business burglary. Officers say they've identified the man in these photos as Damon Troy Moore. They say he burglarized the Sand Trap Bar in Ogden. If you see Moore, again, they say do not approach him. Just give them a call. Deanie? Park City police are looking for this man. Surveillance cameras showed him smashing in the windows of a fur gallery on Main Street. And once inside, he stole $50,000 in coats. With the help of tips, police now know who he is, but they're still trying to find him. If you have information, call Park City police. In national news here, some frightening moments for air travelers in Florida. It happened this morning just before takeoff, a fire erupting in the engine of a dynamic airways plane. 21 people were injured, none of them seriously. Federal investigators are now working to figure out what exactly went wrong here. What a scare. And the military tonight says that it has removed sensitive equipment off that downed blimp in Pennsylvania. After floating for miles and miles across two different states, it finally took shotguns to fully deflate the blimp today. An investigation is underway to figure out how it got loose from its base. Dave? Fresh off his debate performance, Republican presidential candidate Senator Ted Cruz raced back to Washington, D.C. today where he tried to filibuster the budget deal. But his speech didn't last nearly as long as the last time he filibustered. Cruz gave up the floor at about 7 o'clock tonight. Meanwhile, NBC News has learned that Cruz, his campaign, received a big boost after last night's debate. He and Marco Rubio, who's also being called a debate winner, both report a million-dollar fundraising spike in the last 24 hours. Coming up next, stolen right off your front porch. Who does that? The KSL investigators not only found out, we got them on the run. See how this whole thing ends, the chances of getting your stuff back, and how to protect your property. Coming up next. Closed captioning sponsored by Mike's Custom Jewelry. Mike's Custom Jewelry, making it a little easier for her to say yes. Have you ever had something stolen from your house, your car, maybe off of your porch? It's maddening, isn't it? You feel upset, you're angry. A lot of times you feel violated. Well, with the holidays just around the corner here, more and more of us will be receiving packages out in the open, on our porches. Well, here in Utah, a lot of those packages are getting stolen. So the KSL investigators went in search of a couple of things here. One, who's stealing them? And two, how do you keep your stuff from being stolen? Hey, listen, my name's Mike Hedrick. I work with uh, KSL. 
Anyway, I'm doing a story on crime in the area. Right on. And I was wondering, someone's... Engaged in what can only be described as an awkward... And I was wondering, do you know who this guy is? I don't. Really? So you know nothing about this? No. And extremely uncomfortable brother. conversation. Right. Let me show you something this here. This is weird, bro. Sorry. I know it's weird, but... Because what's about to happen tattoo. here in three, here's two, the, now, here's the tattoo. one... It's the same. Well, it should come as no surprise. Now, to get the full effect here, I want you to back that up for a moment. All right, now let's drop it into slow-mo. There we go. Maybe add some dramatic music. Yeah, that's nice. And finally here, a quick sound up to explain. Hey, why'd you steal my package? The one and only reason this foot chase. Why'd you steal it? Is even happening at all. Hey, why'd you steal my package? Now, the package I'm talking about is the one sitting right here on this Salt Lake City porch. Surveillance video capturing the moment it was snatched in the middle of the night. A moment not unlike moment after moment after moment in the Salt Lake Valley. These quick grabs are happening more and more, and they're costing thousands. Some in broad daylight, others after dark. And while not everyone goes in with a well-thought-out plan of hiding the evidence, like Operation Tank Top here, it seems like most... I mean, the guy that came and took the package looked right at about three of these cameras and did it anyway. ...don't really care at all. Oh, he was super casual. He's like, oh, I'm just going to tie my shoe for a sec. No one around. Comes and sits down on the porch. Now, the package that guy stole belongs to Adam Stone, and it's not the first time. Eight cameras up. So uh, Adam set up his own surveillance. Alleyway. We got cameras here, we got cameras there. Hoping the extra here. set of eyes here. would deter Corner, the crime. One up here. And catch right the criminal. There, Unfortunately, the door, that leaves. never happened. And when Adam took the video to police... They've got supposedly bigger things to worry about. He quickly learned a brief cameo by the thief guarantees absolutely nothing. What are the odds of you guys getting that thing back? Extremely low. Burglaries. 12 Salt Lake City detectives trying to solve thousands of Salt Lake City crimes, and the workload is piling up. In the past six years, the amount of property reported stolen from yards and porches is in the thousands, with more than 90% of the cases at a standstill. The reason... We usually don't have anything that we can follow up on. Not enough evidence to find the criminal or the stuff that got stolen. If it's inside here, is it still going to transmit? So, with that in mind, the KSL investigators hatched an idea to find both. So we took a laptop, glued a GPS unit inside of it. Fits in there pretty good. We packed it, boxed it, walked it up to this Salt Lake City porch, dropped it off, and we waited. And we watched until a green Subaru drove on up. A shirtless man jumped out, and as though it belonged to him, grabbed that box in the middle of the afternoon and took off. The GPS unit now pinging. These guys are moving. They're not slowing down. And the KSL investigators now following. All right, so we tracked the GPS to this car right here, and you can look on the inside. You can see that in there off of my glare. That's the box. The guy who took it is now inside in the basement apartment. We snagged this video as he made his way from the car. And if you look closely enough above that trash bag there, well, it appears he's got the laptop. But he didn't stay there long. The GPS tracking our guy to a nearby strip mall. So it looks like they pulled right into... And when we finally caught up... This parking lot. I am not a part of it. I am dropping it off to you. I did not take it. I'm getting... Okay, who took it? I don't know. I'm just getting... Who took it? I do not know, but no, I, I, I want to know. solve this. All right, so we got the laptop, but our guy part. was nowhere yeah. to be found. The woman here wanting to you. apparently I'm solve this is I'm Natasha Waltman. I yeah. don't have anything to do with it. I'm giving it back to you. I'm making sure you get it because I think that is wrong. Now, Natasha is the owner and driver of that green Subaru. You remember, don't you? The one that rolled on up and let this guy out to steal our laptop. Well, it turns out... Who is the guy, though? I need to, I need to know his name. I, I don't know that his name. That guy, she apparently does, does not know... She, I, I don't know his name. ...is 38-year-old Anthony she, Aguilera. I think she'd remember seeing their Facebook friends and everything. Regardless, so we filed a report with police. Because I'll look at the video. Natasha fessed up, and two months after apparently stealing our $800 laptop... 38-year-old Anthony Richard Aguilera. Aguilera was caught with $800,000 of meth and heroin, a stolen gun, and get this, a couple of live grenades. Yeah, apparently this is the kind of guy who steals a package off a porch, a convicted felon with a long, long history. And Natasha here, well, she has a few skeletons in her closet as well. They have no conscience when it comes to victimizing somebody else, and they only care about themselves. The reality is most of these package thefts are simple misdemeanors. But when the thief does not get caught, 
and they see something else, like maybe this printer here in plain sight. So I'll put it around this GPS unit here. Well, they will likely do it again. We're gonna slide it inside here. And again, and again. We're good. Let's get this thing stolen. Case in point, Marcus Gailey here. Regular guy. He likes bikes, trains, selfies, shooting pools, selfies, belly button bear tattoos, selfies, selfies, more selfies. And apparently when he's not snapping a shot in the mirror, he is working as an artist. Hmm. One more thing here. In the middle of the night, you may find someone who looks an awful lot like him stealing our GPS-wrapped wireless printer off the front porch. So, one more time, we follow the pinging dot by dot to this Salt Lake City home. And come daylight, what do you know? Well, that looks an awful lot like Marcus, walking out the front door, hopping on a bike, and then riding down the street with what appears to be my property underneath his arm. Now, what he did with that printer, we may never know, but it certainly wasn't from a lack. Hey, listen, my name's Mike Hedrick. Of trying to find out. You remember this conversation, don't you? I was wondering, someone stole my package from the porch. It's a printer, and I was wondering, do you know who this guy is? I don't. There he is with the package on a bike. Weird. Weird. Do you recognize him? This might be my brother. Your brother? Now, pause it there for a moment. Quick fun fact for you. Court records show Marcus sometimes lies about his identity. Okay, you can play it again. Looks like he's wearing the same shirt that you got right now. Right on. Do you have a twin brother? I do. You guys wear the same clothes then? I just got picked it up from the hell. Really? So you know nothing about this? No. Your twin brother? Yeah, correct. I know, it's weird. All right, so in a moment here, I want you to tattoo. slow that down and here's, here's the there. See that ankle tattoo? Well, now compare it to that ankle tattoo from our surveillance. Huh. Looking at the tattoo. See that tattoo? Here's, now here's the tattoo. It's the same. Unfortunately, in the end, wingtips and a suit. Hey, why'd you steal my package? Could not catch him. Why'd you steal it? Police eventually did, adding to the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine selfies he's racked up at the county jail. Yeah, this is the kind of person whose twin brother steals a package off a porch. And if there's a lesson to be learned from our two thieves, it is this. You need evidence. More cameras. <laughs> you need a witness. All right, I don't know them. I'm freaking out. Where are you going? Sometimes when things get real, yo. I want my printer back. You need a little speed. All right, it should be noted. Chasing after thieves is not encouraged. Police will tell you that. I would tell you the same thing. But sometimes as journalists, situations happen fast. And in this case, we were able to get the more, inf more information and the stuff that we needed for this story. So what can you do to keep your packages safe? Well, choose a shipping option that requires you to sign for delivery. Also here, if you're not home during the day, have your packages delivered maybe to your place of work. Ask a delivery service to hold your package for customer pickup. That's another option. Finally here, contact your credit card company to find out if it offers a purchase protection service that might reimburse you for stolen purchases. Wow. I was, uh, I was timing you in the 40, and that's very impressive. Well, Dave, we'll get I, some I try and go to the gym and yeah. do the best I can. Keep My cardio up. was like, given out towards the like end of Superman. it. But <laughs> good Great. news is, police finally, you know, we, we filed the reports with police. They did their homework. It took a while, and that's one of the things about this. You need the evidence there. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. complain, hey, you know, they, they didn't catch the guy that yeah. I reported. Well, you need a lot of information and evidence, and, and we had that. So Okay. Wow. Nice work. Great, great report. Well, the storm today, in and out. We like that, didn't yeah, we? Little bet. valley rain, little mountain snow, and there are more storms coming in the seven day. Let's go and show you what it looked like today. Time lapse photography showing you the dark clouds and rain would come and go across northern and southern Utah. But up in the higher elevations, it was snow. And again, turning the page on fall and looking ahead towards winter, we need the snow. We've had a rough couple of years and we need every flake we can get. Brian Head, Mike Samish saying we had moderate snow throughout the day and then this evening, snow pellets, strong wind. He says about five inches out of the total of that storm. So southern Utah, you did all right. And the resorts all around northern and southern Utah are looking, planning, hoping for as early of an opening as they can possibly muster. And we just got to keep these storms coming in order to make that happen. Kodachrome Basin, 0.43 inches of water, Escalante a quarter, Agua Canyon, Southern Utah over a quarter, Loa did the same, Monroe 0.24, Kaysville had a quarter of an inch, and Cedar City had a quarter as well. This was a decent storm, not a big storm, and we talked about it for days when it splits, 
it gets weak. And that's exactly what happened with this one. But hey, the totals were about in line with what we thought between a quarter and a half in central Utah and a tenth to a quarter here across the Wasatch Front. So the peace in the north swept on through. The peace in the south, well, the core of it went through Arizona, but the moisture is now continuing to move through eastern Utah. So we're starting to see a diminishing of the storminess and a little bit of clearing, although there are still a few little sprinkles happening across northern Utah. It's 45 in Ogden and in Vernal. Eastern part of the state continues to see the storm. The western side starting to clear out and the temperatures dropping 30s out in Ely and Elko. KSL Vortex, all right, a few little showers continuing to race along I-80 out in the West Desert, but this will also taper off overnight, and we're looking at a partly cloudy day tomorrow, and temperatures warm up just a little bit for Halloween. Let's go and show you what the plan is. Storm zone, the moisture around tonight, exits. Eastern Utah storm, gone. A little brush by tomorrow evening, southern Idaho, extreme northern Utah, some clouds and maybe a few sprinkles, but that's it. Really, it's just the remnant piece of a little, uh, or the bigger pieces up to the north, and this is just the trailing end. By Saturday, Nice, but the next storm, it already starts taking shape for Sunday into Monday, and it will impact the first part of our week. So the plan is this evening, as skies clear, Montpelier 28, Evanston 31, tomorrow 40s, 50s, and 60s across the area with a few lingering clouds over parts of eastern Utah and more sunshine over parts of western Utah. Roosevelt will top out at 56, Lake Powell at 63, and Monticello a chilly day, only 45 degrees. 61 in Kanab, 71 in St. George. will go mostly sunny for St. George. Partly cloudy skies continue over Richfield and up the mountain range to Ephraim. Take a look at the seven-day forecast, St. George. 70s for the next four, and then cool. Three days of extra cool temperatures. Highs in the 50s and lows a week from today. 39 degrees in St. George. Yes, the cold air will arrive and it will actually come with a little bit of storminess. Let's talk about what the tomorrow looks like. Partly cloudy skies, temperatures a little bit below normal. We're going the mid 50s, but we do start to climb back to the 60s on Saturday. Wind on Sunday ahead of a storm that will bring valley rain, bench and mountain snow Monday and Tuesday. Highs go to the 40s, lows in the 30s. Ooh. Happy November, everybody. Weren't we in the 80s like two weeks ago? It was, seems exactly. that it wasn't long. Happen fast. Yep. All right, thanks, thanks. Kevin. You bet. All right, Dave's got some friends in low places, but really high places. My low place friends are right here. <laughs> the high place across the street. Big night at the newly named Vivint Arena tonight. Garth Brooks opened the first of four shows there. And earlier this evening, I got a chance to talk to him one on one. You're back 17 years later. How are you different? I think the big difference between touring in the 90s and touring now is Miss Yearwood. There's the big difference. Um, she brings this, this wonderful joy and this love and everything together, and you feel like you're at home with her wherever you're at. Brooks said one of the reasons they're doing multiple shows in the same city is because he wants to keep ticket prices down for his fans and that he remembered how fun it was to play Utah 17 years ago. You can see my entire interview on KSL.com and on my Facebook page. I'll tell you what, he's one of the most normal big shot guys yeah. you'll ever meet and there's a reason why thousands of Utahns go listen to him perform. He's show free. after show after yeah. show, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. All right, JJ, what do you got in sports? Well, mm -hmm. I got some sad news about a former Ute All-American, another Ute enjoying perfection in the NFL. And a Utah high school volleyball team is nationally ranked and could complete a perfect season. Someone's celebrating a state championship right after this. We have some sad news to report tonight. Utah basketball legend Luther Tiki Burden has passed away at the age of 62. The 6'2 shooting guard averaged 28.7 points per game. As a junior in the 1974-75 season, he was named to the AP All-America team and he went on to play professionally for the Virginia Squires and New York Knicks. He's a sixth leading scorer in Utah basketball history and is a member of the Crimson Club Hall of Fame. Thursday night football. Patriots hosting the resurgent Dolphins, no question. Who owns the AFC East? 38-year-old Tom Brady playing like he's 28 again. A 47-yard touchdown to Rob Gronkowski. Brady 356 yards and four touchdowns. And check out number 96. It's Silver Salinga getting into the Miami backfield. The Copper Hills grad and former Ute picks up a tackle for a loss. He helps the Patriots remain perfect at 7-0. and oh. mm. The Morgan High volleyball team is ranked 11th in the country and just one win away from perfection. Standing in the way of their perfection, perfect 32-0 season is last year's 3A volleyball champs, Snow Canyon. The two schools faced off tonight for the 3A state championship at UVU. Morgan already up one set. They need this point to go up to Aubrey Sanders. Make sure it happens. In the third set, it was all Morgan. The Trojans only lost three sets all year. That's how dominant they were. Jaden Farr with the kill. 
and the celebration begins. The Morgan Trojans win the 3A state volleyball championship, their 16th state title. They complete their perfect season, 32-0. Especially against Stokanen, it's just, it's awesome. A lot of people say, oh, I wish you'd lose one so that you could, you know, you could get going, but no way, not these kids. We wanted it, we knew how it was gonna be. Always one. <laughs> it's always one. <laughs> She'll never forget that. No, That's awesome. neither will we. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Good job, Morgan. Yeah. There you go. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> Anybody have some early Halloween parades they're going to tomorrow? Yeah, 8.30 at... Right on. <laughs> <laughs> Never too early for candy, is it? Dang. Happy Halloween. Good night. <laughs> See ya.